Okay, hello and welcome to our Naturally You class for today. Um, just before we get into the class, we wanted to remind everybody that we have the Healthy Habits Challenge coming up next month, and so we're going to be getting ready for it this month. Um, we're going to be posting about it on the Naturally You Facebook page and, or group, so if you have any questions about it. Basically what it is, is um, we're, gonna, we're doing a challenge which is going to involve some prizes and all for you just using your doTERRA products doing using the lifelong vitality and the terrazyme and the citrus oils oils primarily and then throughout the next this month and next month we're going to be doing classes all centered around health like we did last month too all centered around healthy habits and ways to just establish healthy habits for yourself and your families and anyway so today our topic for today is healthy habit for the healthy habits topic is um, we were thinking it's kids and play is what we're talking about. When we were planning for this class, we were thinking about that summer's coming. Um, I know here at our house, we are in full like end of school mode. We um, had our spring concert this last week and um, my son tomorrow is doing a farmer's market for his agriculture class. And He's been planning for it all year, just kind of big things that we've been planning for all year because school's come ending. And so um, as we were planning for this, these classes, we thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun to do a class about keeping kids entertained and what to do with these kids that are getting out of school and some things we can do with them. So um, Megan's got some really good fun things that you can DIY things that you can do with your kids. But before that, I'm just going to take a few minutes because this is if you've been on any of our classes for very long, you know that this is kind of my, my specialty, anything to do with kids. So if you don't know, I have my degree, I have a bachelor's of science degree in family science and child development. So I literally have a bachelor of science degree in kids. And I worked for 10 years, well over 10 years, as a developmental um, therapist and a behavior therapist. And then I supervised other people and trained them on just basically how to play with kids. That's what we did is we learned, I trained people how to play with kids. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of go in and talk about play a little bit because I think we underestimate the importance of play. So there is a guy named John Holt. He's an author you can look up who has written quite a bit about child development and education. But one of his big things is he, he coined the phrase, a child's work is play. Because children learn through, what, through, through their play. They learn how they associate with the world. They learn where their space is in the world. They learn, the ro they learn things like, um, think about, for example, playing house when you were a child and you played house, what are some of the things you learned from that? You learned, you know, you were imitating your mom or maybe imitating your dad and the things that they did. And you learned about your parents' roles. You learned about adult behaviors, all of that through just playing the game of house. Other games you can think about is playing tag. What are some of the things kids learn through that? They learn problem solving is one of them. They learn how to run away as fast as they can. And they learn how to associate and get, in, get, in, get along with other kids. Anyways, so this concept of play is, it's a really big deal that we really shouldn't take lightly when we're talking about our kids. So as kids are starting to get out of school, I know sometimes even me where I've like had all this education and all this experience in the academic side of child development and what goes on with kids, um, I find myself often, because I, I have a confession to make, I have a huge aversion to screens, like, big time aversion to screens. I, when I see my kids playing video games or watching movies, I instantly think, what job can I have them do? What can I go make them do to get them off the screen? How do I get them off the screen? And so I send them to go do some job, to mow the lawn or to, right now they're out picking up dog poop, <laughs> but, or to do the dishes or to take out the trash or something. So I'm trying to shift my mind right now into I'm encouraging play. I'm wanting to encourage more play and helping them to see just find things to play because one of the things that's happened in at least, at least in my home, and I think probably not, I'm not alone in this as a society. I think we've gotten so used to being constantly stimulated by some sort of a screen, some sort of interaction with a virtual world that 
we are losing touch with the real world. We are so used to, kids are getting so used to playing a game where they push little buttons to run through a field and, or whatever. And when was the last time that they actually ran through a field? or they actually went outside and played. And so I'm trying to shift my thinking in that getting kids outside in the nice weather and helping them, helping them to learn how to play because they've forgotten. Kids spend so much time in front of a screen that they forget how to play. So I'm gonna turn some time over to Megan to show you some ideas of things that you can do with kids to get them going and then I'll probably have some more stuff to say afterwards. <laughs> that's what I do. But I gotta go turn off a timer that's beeping at me. So just a minute. All right. Well, yeah, um, I love learning from Stephanie. Um, her kids are, are older than my kiddo. And um, so I have one son. I, I'm Megan Anderson, by the way, for those of you who don't um, know me. We recently just uh, moved to Alaska. So there's tons of, um, my kind of playgrounds here, um, it's, which is the woods. I want my kids running through the woods and running in the yard and um, having natural playscapes. Um, it's probably, I don't know, I don't even want to date myself, but probably close to 10 years ago when I was working with um, reservations across the Midwest and the child care centers. And I met this amazing lady that just opened my mind because I thought, you know, okay, a child, um, play area when I have kids someday had to be the two swing sets with that little like uh, treehouse thing with a slide out of it, <laughs> you know, and that was, that was what a, a playhouse would be um, or a playground would be or even at schools, you know, that's how I was raised. It was always the plastic, um, you know, uh, playgrounds. And she was like, look at how boring this is. And I'm like, what? There's like swings and there's like, you know, slides. And she was like, no, there's only one way to use those plastic things. Like they tell the kid, you know, the kid walks up to a slide and says, okay, this is how I use it. I go down it. That's only one way. And it doesn't stimulate their imagination. And so they ripped out this um, child care center, ripped out all their plastic playground and put in natural stuff. And so they, they had a slide, but it was built into a hill. So the kids would run up the natural hill and then they could slide down the hill, but they could also roll down the hill. They could do all these other things, whatever their imagination came up with. And they had, they buried a canoe. Um, it was like an old canoe that had holes, um, so they couldn't you know, use it as a canoe anymore, but they buried it. So then the kids could sit in the canoe and then they planted reed grass around it so they could um, pretend that they were harvesting wild rice and stuff like that, you know, just on their playground. And, um, and so that really got me thinking like, yeah, what, when I was happy, happiest as a kid, I was running through the woods. I was finding different, um, I don't know, I am not a naturalist, but, um, you know, different things on the trees, you know, buds and leaves and, and sticks and flowers and different shapes and different smells. And, um, and here in Alaska, there's no shortage of that. So that's where I'm just like, yes, like I want my kiddo to get out there. He's, um, he just turned two this, uh, this month. And then we have another one coming in June. And I, I think I've been biting the bullet a little bit fast where I'm like, okay, let's get the paint out and let's get the crayons out. And he's just like, what do I do with these things? And he throws them across the room and then he's done. And I'm like, well, no, I want to create, I like finger painting and, and stuff like that and using natural paints and stuff. And so, um, I love learning about the play and then also just, you know, some of the homeschool models that I've been looking at. Um, there's like the Charlotte Mason, there's the Reg Reggio, I don't know if that's how you say it. Um, but they do a lot about how to play as childhood. And so that's kind of my thing as a stay at home mom. Um, I want my kids to have an unrushed childhood. That's what I love the most about my childhood. We weren't rushed into school and learning and here I was like okay he's got to learn his numbers and his colors and and you know he's got to learn all these words and then I realized you know what he's gonna learn that anyways let's learn how to play and be compassionate and loving and caring and all these values that I you know want to instill in him and then you know he'll learn his numbers and colors at, at some day so um, I just wanted to share with you guys some of these recipes if I can Oh, that's weird. My computer's not been cooperating with me, but we shall see if this works. <laughs> um, 
So can you guys see my screen? Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. So here's some recipes and I just pulled these off of um, doTERRA.com and I'll post this on the Naturally You group. Um, it's a PDF, but I thought this was so cool. So we, um, we ended up doing the, the sidewalk chalk for my kiddo and he is absolutely in love with it. I didn't think he would because I put colors in front of him and he just throws them. <laughs> um, but I drew like um, a little road out on our sidewalk and he drove all of his trucks down the road and he parked them in the garage and he just kind of played make believe um, in the little community that we made. But did you know you can make your own um, sidewalk chalk? I didn't um, before I found this recipe, but it's super easy. Uh, plaster of Paris, water, a food coloring paste, a silicone mold. They use popsicle molds. You could use whatever you have. I use, um, I have gingerbread uh, silicone molds for my lotion bars that I make in the winter. So we had gingerbread um, shaped sidewalk chalk. And then um, they recommend putting wild orange. And that's what we did. We put wild orange in it. But you could put whatever scent you wanted if you wanted them um, in maybe a relaxing, like that would be something that they do before a nap and just to calm down. You could put lavender in um, your sidewalk chalk and it's gonna smell lovely the whole summer through. And so um, you can do that if there's the directions there. Slime, I don't know about you guys, but I'm still a sucker for slime. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I used to make this all the time as a kid. <laughs> with the Elmer's glue, or they have clear school glue. I don't think at my age we had clear, that was pretty fancy. Um, we just had the white stuff, um, but either would work. And um, you put liquid starch in, craft pom poms is what this kiddo has. And then again, they said lavender there, you could put wild orange, you could put, um, I don't know, any of the citrus ones would be fun. Um, I was thinking peppermint, but it, you, you don't want peppermint to get in the kids kiddos eyes so if they're if they're a little older they could handle peppermint um we also made here i gotta move the screen here we made this moon sand for my um nieces and nephews one time and they just loved it because they could play that inside um on the rainy days and the days they didn't want to go out to the sandbox um so we're learning rainy days here where we live in a in a rainforest the world's largest temperate rainforest now so the rainy days are our days to go outside. Um, but if you need something inside um, to, to occupy your kiddos, you can definitely make the moon sand. And it's what you have on hand already, flour and vegetable oil. It's so super easy. Um, and again, lavender, so it could be a quiet toy to quiet them down before a nap. Um, but anything to get their imaginations going, like that's, that's my big thing. Um, you know, how can we give them toys that isn't just a one size fits all. Like I hate the plastic toys that you get and there's only one way to use them. There's only, you know, it doesn't stimulate their imagination, let alone screens. Screens don't. I, I have the same aversion to screens. Um, and my two year old has seen a screen way too much for my opinion. Um, and uh, so getting them away from those screens that of course don't stimulate, stimulate their imagination and I don't know, I might go too far, but I think it dumbs us down, like watching those, those shows. Like some of them, I'm like, this is the dumbest show ever. I've never, you know, he's, he's not, go not only is he not going to learn anything from that show, it just treats him like he's an idiot. And I'm like, he at two already is, you know, he knows more than that show was showing. And even with books, I'm finding, and I found a website um, that I haven't explored much, but they had a bunch of recommendations for specific books, you know, that stimulate their creativity and their imagination and, the, and it's using really great language for them um, and not just the really simple dumbed down stuff that um, it doesn't get any anyone anywhere in life and so um, and then play-doh who amongst us an adults doesn't love play-doh <laughs> and so I love play-doh um, we made this and it lasted and lasted and lasted I was surprised um, I just covered it in, in saran wrap and put it on the shelf and um, it stayed good for months on end and so um, it only lost it because he put it into chunks and threw it everywhere <laughs> so um, so that's where uh, but yeah it's so easy to make and again, you can um, just put whatever essential oils you want um, in there. Lemon, any of the citrus oils. I think lavender is my go-to for the, a lot of these toys. Probably why I have like eight 
empty bottles of lavender when I'm trying to find lavender around my house. Um, but, um, but yeah, and maybe um, Stephanie has some ideas of different oils that her boys like with, when they're older. We've used mostly the citrus oils when we do those because they like them so much and they smell good and they're pretty easy. Um, I'm with you, I haven't done much with peppermint. Yeah, that's a kind of an iffy but, one. Um, mostly, we use mostly the citrus oils. We had some, um, some Play-Doh that we, we had it for probably, I kept it inside of a little pint jar and it was, we'd put lemon in it. And I had that for over a year because we just kept putting it back in the same jar and then we'd take it out and play with it and then put it back in the yarn jar. And then finally, same thing. I think it got left out once or something. And I was like, oh, I'm done with this. We threw it away. But it lasted that's, that long. That's a testimonial to the antibacterial properties of the citrus oils because holy cow, you know, with all the little kiddo you know, hands playing with it over and over again. And, you know, even on the table and yeah. Um, nothing grows, you know, so I was just thinking like even lemon and grapefruit, like you could mix and match your citrus in the, in the Play-Dohs and stuff and the, and the silly putties. Um, you don't have to just stick to one simple one, but yeah, you could mix and match whatever your heart is, is saying, or if you have older kiddos who can smell them and tell you what they like, that would be even better. Um, and just, um, follow, follow what they like. The other one here I saw on this PDF, which I didn't know you could make your own bouncy balls. And so we haven't actually tried this one yet. We tried once. We didn't, yeah. we didn't get the combination just right. They ended up, they were bouncy, but they were kind of liquidy, but it was oh. fun to try. It was a fun it's process cool. to try. Yeah, it's still cool. Well, I mean, you think about that with homeschooling too, like you, like how much science could you teach just by this, you know, recipe? Um, so, you know, with the older kiddos, you could teach them science at, while you're having fun, you know, and making cool stuff. And even if they're a little runny, I think that still would be pretty cool um, to see. And, and if you could make like a big one, I don't know. I love those big bouncy balls. Um, and so um, that would be cool. I should actually make some of these because he got a couple of bouncy balls, um, but my dog stole them. So um, I, should, I should try to make this. And so I could always have them on hand because I could just make them. Um, and here they had recommend balance in the bouncy balls, which I'm thinking would be an amazing oil to put in even Play-Doh or, you know, just calming. Um, it's calming. It helps ground the kids, um, helps their blood flow better. Uh, it helps with focus. It helps with so much stuff. So I'm just thinking balance might be in the moon sand and the Play-Doh, um, here in the bouncy balls is what they recommend. And so, yeah, that's one that I think I would definitely, I should try next time. But that's what I was thinking um, too of, of uh, so that's all the recipes I have for the DIY, but even, you know, getting them outside and gardening or having a pet project, like I'm excited for my kiddo to get a little older so we can be like, okay, you know, you get this section of the garden and you can plant whatever you want and you can tend to it and that's, that's your area and you get to, plant what you like to eat and and I'm, I'm excited for that part too but he's even out in the garden and oh his big thing right now is throwing rocks and so outside our house there's a 40 foot cliff to the ocean <laughs> and so he stands at the edge of the cliff and he throws rocks and we could do that for hours and hours and hours and hours and we have a, have a gravel driveway so we will never run out of rocks <laughs> and um and yes, I'm definitely the mom that is making the box around him. I get made fun of because I'm like, okay, back up, back up. Okay, too far, too far <laughs> with this cliff, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a helicopter mom. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's kind of, um, you know, for, for maybe younger kiddos, but even older kiddos, because I would definitely not turn down making bouncy balls or Play-Doh or that slime, uh, even at my age. So um yeah, that's what we're, that's kind of our plan. And then exploring Alaska, we're going to go see some whales this weekend. So one of the other things I was thinking about, I have this book that's sitting right here that I borrowed from my sister. I'm going to hold it up. You can see it's actually called Child's Work. It's, called, it's by Nancy Wallace. It's called Child's Work, it's Taking Children's Choices Seriously. And this is, it's about, it's a, it's about homeschooling and how to incorporate ch um, work into homeschool, which I think 
we're going that direction right now with our presentation, but oh well, because <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do all the time. Anyway, um, and this concept of the child's work and that taking their choices seriously, letting them make choices and letting them be a part of the process of of what you do in a day. So I was thinking as I was preparing for this class today about some of the summers that I feel like were our most successful summers. And um, first of all, I'll start off with the summers that I feel like were not successful is the ones where my kids spent their entire summer vegging out in front of the TV or just kind of moping around because they were bored and couldn't figure out what to do. So first of all, I'm going to talk about this concept of boredom. We need to realize that boredom is actually a good thing and it's okay for kids to get bored because they have to, especially in our, in this world that we live in where they have so much constant stimulus in front of them, they get so used to constantly being entertained that when boredom happens, they don't know how to cope with it. And what needs to happen is children need to experience boredom so that they can kickstart their brains into creativity. Because, and I, I know there's research out there because I've read it before, but I didn't find it for this presentation, but there is research out there that talks about how if you spend too much time in front of screens, I call it, it literally melts your brain. It makes it so that you lose your creativity, your imagination slows down. These kind of things that make children children, they stop happening and they start depending on having an outside stimulus in order for them to have fun and be entertained and to grow and to progress. So boredom is a good thing. And so I tell my kids all the time, they come up to me and they say, mom, I'm so bored. And I look at them and I say, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you're bored. Now go figure out how to get on board. Um, because it's a good, good thing for them. And anyway, so back to what I was saying before, the summers that I feel like have been the most successful summers in our house was ones where I started before school got out. Um, making a plan for the things that we wanted to do in the summer. Um, one summer I said, we just designated, we said Friday is friend day. So every Friday we invited somebody over to play and we had friends over every single Friday. Uh, we had other things that we did like um, just going on picnics. And for me, I'm a planner and I like to know where things are gonna fall into my day. So I plan things out. I planned out the picnics. What I'm working on right now for this summer is I'm working on field trips that we're going to be going on throughout the summer. And it doesn't have to be every week. It can be once a month. So we'll probably get three field trips in this month. But if you are looking for ways to keep your kids entertained, you as a parent have to be involved with them. You got to be doing stuff with them. And so I would encourage you to look at where you live and like Megan was talking about, they're going well watching. Now that's not an option for me. I live in Southern Idaho, but some, I do have some incredible options in that we're only about an hour and a half away from Craters of the Moon, which is an incredible geological site. I've, I grew up out there and I've been there many times. I'm taking my kids there this summer. Some other, yeah. what the, was that? In the canyons. I want to come see those yes. someday. We have, we have gorgeous canyons here, gorgeous canyons and the Snake River and places to go fishing and places to go hiking and it's all over here. But it doesn't matter where you live. You can be in Colorado, you could be in Utah, you could be in California, you could be back east. There's gonna be places that are unique to your place, your region, to the place that you live that make you who you are. Go see them. Take your kids and go see them. We've spent a lot, my kids and I have spent a lot of time at fish hatcheries because we live right smack dab in the middle. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but there is more farm raised trout that comes out of Idaho, this part of Idaho where we live than any other part of the United States. There, we have so much, so much trout that comes out of here. So we have gone to, I think we've visited every fish hatchery, probably not every fish hatchery because there's tons of them, but the ones that allow visitors. We've gone and visited them and learned about the fish and how that, that, you know, the fishing industry and all of that here where we live. We've also gone to see, um, there's little tiny museums in towns. Like if you just look around, there's probably a little tiny museum in your town that you've never been to. Go check it out. I took my kids a couple of years ago down to Hagerman where we live and we saw there's a, 
a museum down there where they have the Hagerman horse on, on display. It's the oldest horse fossil ever found. And it's in this little teeny tiny little hole in the wall museum down in Hagerman, Idaho. And I took my kids there once. So anyway, the whole point of this class is summer's coming. Kids are going to get out of school, have a plan, do something so that your kids aren't bored. And well, like I said before, boredom is good, but do something so that it they can have opportunities to stimulate their creativity, giving them opportunities to make choices and to grow because that's how we as human beings grow and flourish is by having opportunities to be creative. Anyway, any questions or comments you guys have? <sighs> we just kind of unloaded, but. Well, I want to follow that up because as you're talking here, it made me remember, um, you know, the funnest memories growing up, we would, you know, my parents would be like, okay, you know, maybe we're kind of bored. I mean, my parents never said those words, but, um, <laughs> but they were like, you know, let's, let's get in the car and go somewhere. And so we would just drive around Northern Wisconsin and all these little towns and happen upon like a little, you know, ice cream, you know, store or a little, you know, like there's this town called Cornucopia that has like the most gorgeous sand little beach on Lake Superior, but Cornucopia is probably like 10, 15 people big, you know, things you would never see or I would never know. And now, you know, as an adult, I may run into somebody and they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm from just outside of Cornucopia. And it's like, I've been there, you know, I know exactly where you're from. And it gives, you know, kind of a, a world view, but we never left northern northern Wisconsin. You know, I mean, we never. That's just where we spent our summers, and and just driving these little towns. And like you said, you happen upon a little museum, or you happen upon a geographical site, or you happen upon. I mean, in Wisconsin, I think I don't know if it's unique, but it's it's. I haven't seen it too many other places, but each town is known for something. Like we're halfway between the equator and the North Pole, or you know, like we're the sunfish capital of the world, or the or the blueberry capital, or you know, something like that. And so it's just kind of fun to see those little towns and and learn things you would never learn if, unless you just got out and, and looked around your own backyard. Yeah, it's all out there. Another thing I thought of the other day, we were driving home from Twin Falls, which is just south, just east of us. And um, there's a, I'm sure they have it in other states, but in Idaho, all over the place, they have these signs. They're big wooden signs that are by the side of the road and it says historical site. And it has all the listing about why this is a historical site or a geological site. And it has all the listings about why you know, all this. And my son said to me, he said, mom, what is that? And I said, oh, it's one of the historical sites. It's probably something to do with the Oregon Trail. And it hit me that I have lived here my entire life. And I've oh, driven by that yeah. sign probably a million times and never stopped and read it. I so, love those. I always, I always pull off. <laughs> well, I promised myself the next time I have the kids in the car, we're going to stop and read that sign and see. Because we live in a part, the Oregon Trail goes right through here. And there's so much history where we live. And I don't think it matters where you live. You can be anywhere in the world and there's going to be things like that that you can take your kids to and have some fun. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a big deal. Like Megan said, just put them in the car and go for a drive. Um, we did one time we had, we had to drive up to Mackie, which is a ways from us. And we were driving through Arco, this little tiny town in the middle of nowhere. It's called the Atomic City because it's the first city to ever be lit by nuclear power because it's right by the nuclear power plant in the middle of nowhere, literally middle of nowhere. We were hungry. So we stopped off and had some pizza. Best pizza we've ever had in our entire lives. And it was a little hole in the wall restaurant in Arco, Idaho. And we still talk about that. We talk about going back to Arco just to get pizza. And, you know, just yeah. fun little things you can do with your kids. Um, and your families. I think that's how you make your family memories. That's how you stimulate the creativity. And if we want to tie it all back to oils, put a diffuser in your car so you can diffuse yeah. while you drive. <laughs> anyway. and, and, and prevent the, are we there yet? So. <laughs> anyway, there's that's a comment in the chat box. Let me read it. Oh, Lena says she's loving the ideas. Does anybody else have any comments or questions or anything about kids and play and oils? How to put it all together. I think when I first met my husband, he thought I was strange when I'm like, we have to pull over and read the sign. <laughs> and, but we learned, I, did you know, in northern w w Wisconsin, there were, used to be mountains taller than the Rockies, but they were ground away by the glacier. I lived in Wisconsin my entire life. I had no idea that 
that had ever existed. Or in Libby, when you brought up the pizza, I'm like, in Libby, Montana, there is a little hamburger uh, milkshake place that Ryan and I went to that has the world's best huckleberry milkshakes. If so, if you ever find yourself in Libby, Montana, um, <laughs> we went for a drive once from Minnesota and we ended up in Montana. But <laughs> it's a story for another day. But that's, I just like to do that. I just like to look at these little towns and see what's there and see... And I think that all started, like, from what you're saying, is these, just these little trips, you know, as a kid, we'd get in the car and just go, and we, you know, an afternoon or something. I mean, it wasn't like we really went on these big, long trips. We always, you know, we never stayed overnight anywhere, so. Yeah, just drive, just drive for yeah. a little while and then come home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Another one I just thought of, too, I, I'm sure this is not unique to Idaho, but I know in the summertime here in Idaho, every town has some sort of a town celebration. Yes, so like definitely. where I live every June, the second weekend in June is dairy days. And we celebrate the dairies because we are dairy country. There's a town just down the road from us that has strawberry days. Another days that ha another town that has their friendship days. And basically it's a weekend where they bring in vendors and they'll bring in a carnival and they have a parade and every town does something. Um, there's outlaw days and there's golly, I can't even, there's plenty, there's so many of them just around here. You could go to just different little festivals if you want. And they always have little farmer's markets and they have fun little things that you can do with your kids and um, just make memories, just make memories. Well, I'm excited, but now, you know, I'm in landlocked Juno, so I don't know, but I, so I do love Idaho and Wisconsin was like that, like little festivals, like everything was like sunfish festival and, and blueberry festival and all of that and so yeah I definitely love going to those so you give it you give me a lot of ideas but this summer I think I'm gonna we're just gonna build a house and have a baby <laughs> yeah. anybody else more. have anything you want to share about maybe some ideas you have for keeping kids entertained through the summer or helping kids imaginations to flourish and be creative Right. I guess not. Anyway. Well, very cool. Uh, yeah, now I'm inspired. I'm like, hey, summer's here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it is here and it's funny. Oh, Janice says we like hiking. Oh, yes. hiking is so much fun. And it doesn't matter where you live. You can go hiking somewhere. Even if hiking consists of walking, one of the best hikes I ever went on um, was I was in downtown Boise and they have a lot of public art down there just murals on the sides of buildings and sculptures and statues and just on the side of the road they have this kiosk where you can pick up a flyer and it's a map to where all the public art is and so we went on a walk and we visited all those all that art just in downtown Boise and it ended up being like a couple miles that we walked but it was really really cool and I'm sure there's other places like that. So hiking, you don't have to think that you can't take a, go on a hike because maybe you live somewhere that is really urban. You can go on a hike, go discover where you live. There's probably something really cool just around the corner that you haven't seen before. Yeah, I like that. Like having fresh eyes of, you know, like even when we were here, you know, we're here in Juneau, Alaska. And I told Ryan, I'm like, we need to go on a vacation. And then we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, people come here on vacation. We should probably look around here, you know, and do the things that they have here um, before we leave and go, you know, somewhere else. Um, and that really kind of opened our eyes to pay attention to, okay, what, you know, what is there here? You know, where are the trails? Where are um, the tours and, and things like that? What do people like doing? Mm -hmm. Maybe take some time to look, go visit your, your local chamber of commerce or, you know, visitor center, wherever you live. And, Ask them, what do people do when they come here to visit? Or, and I don't, I mean, a lot of places I've been, so, but I can't speak for everywhere, have those little magazines. They're free and they're usually at all the restaurants or the, all the, you know, um, bakeries or whatever. And you, they have the little magazines that tell you the restaurants, the, the festival, the festivals, the dates, the, um, they give you maps. There's just, there's tons of information. If you just go find those little magazines everywhere. Yeah, that's always my favorite thing when I'm in a new town and I see those, I grab them. <laughs> so I guess our point today is get out, have some fun, 
help your kids stimulate their imagination and get away from the screens for the summer. <laughs> and learn about boredom. That's new to me. I learned that today. So thank you. Boredom is a good thing. The best, most creative things happen after extreme boredom. It's it really good to know, I think I've been approaching this mom task with if my kid is bored, I'm doing something wrong. So um, I think I need to change that. <laughs> boredom is a good thing. Let them be bored. Because if they don't ever experience boredom and not knowing what to do, then they never figure out how to entertain themselves. They depend on other people or other, you know, things, other screens. That's what I say because I'm so, I'm sorry. I, I just am very anti-screen and it drives me crazy. I, anyway, there's so many other ways to entertain yourself, but if you don't allow a child time to be bored, then they won't discover those things on their own. And I guess that's the lesson my dad's has always been trying to teach me. And I don't think I really got that until adulthood where it's like, now it's like, yeah, now I easily can entertain myself, but I know I, I struggled with it a lot. And he'd just be like, we didn't have toys growing up. And so we had to figure out ways to entertain ourselves and, and you can do it too. And, and I'd be like, no, I can't. You know? so, so many ways that you can entertain. My dad tells a story about, um, when he was growing up with his brothers, they would go out to the potato cellar and there was mountains and mountains of potatoes because they, you know, in the fall they would harvest them. And so all through the winter, these cellars would be full of potatoes. So they would go out in these potato cellars and they would pretend that the potatoes were cars and they would build cities and roads and towns in the potato cellar and their cars were potatoes. And, you know, you don't, kids don't need fancy things to have fun. That's what I want to want to keep in mind um, as you know the new gadgets come out or you know Amazon that's you know my thing they'll be like oh the newest latest toy and it's like all flashy lights and sounds I'm like oh gosh does he want that like I don't know but you know to him to him just throwing rocks over the cliff is like Disneyland right now so <laughs> I have to keep my brain out of it <laughs> well and honestly the car the toys with the flashy lights and all the stimulus aren't necessarily the best thing for the kid anyway for for kids yeah because it's outside, it, then it goes, you're going back to, it's an outside stimulus. It's something else that they are turning to, to stimulate their mind, stimulate their creativity, instead of learning how to turn in on themselves and become their own stimulus. Oh, anyway, I could go lesson right there. <laughs> on and on about, I could go on and on about this sub subject because it's one of my huge passions and it's one of my soapboxes, but <laughs> I want to keep okay. you guys. Well, you'll post, you'll post more naturally you about your ideas that come to you. Cause that, I, will I, think write, I will write a post today about kids mm -hmm. and work. Ch a child's work is play. Yeah. And boredom. That's huge. That mm -hmm. is huge for me. Cause I'm always like, Oh gosh, I'm doing something wrong. I gotta, I gotta get something going here. I'm not signing up for enough activities or I, I didn't, I didn't do something right here. I didn't <laughs> let, um, them be bored. <laughs> let them be bored. That should be our tagline. Let, hashtag let them be bored. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, that's all I have. I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. And I learned so much and excited to keep learning throughout the summer as I follow you guys, you know, in the posts that you put up that you're doing this summer. So thanks for being here, everybody. Remember that the Naturally You Challenge starts June 1st. So oh, and we should talk to them. So order, make sure um, if you want in on the challenge, you have to order your Healthy Habits Kit by the 25th, I believe, and it's on sale this month, 20% off. And you get, um, you know, a lot of gut health things and the citrus oils and it all comes in a nice little handy kit that you can follow us in June. Yep. So make sure you get your, Be get, sure your get, it in. Um, get it in as quick as you can. Cause if you get it in now, then you'll get the free product of the month, which my mind just went blank and I can't remember what it is. I want to say, is it Cypress? Cypress, it which Cypress. so, I just found out the power of this little guy last night. So since I've been pregnant, my legs at night when I go to go to sleep, it feels like like rest, restless leg or something. I mean, they just kind of are moving. I put this on last night. Did not That feeling did not come at all. So Cypress, if you have That's anything. Incredible for, for circulation. Yeah. And I've, I know I've worked with other women with pregnancy and their legs don't get great circulation when you're pregnant. And so Cypress on your legs for pregnancy is a great idea. 
Maybe it's circulation because it's hard to describe the feeling. It's a feeling like they want to move, but they're not moving. I don't know if that's restless leg. It just started um, this pregnancy, but Cyprus last night was my first time really using that. Otherwise I diffuse it a lot. It smells so good. Okay. Right. Well, we will see you guys all next week. And thanks for listening to us. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye.